In this presentation, we will discuss payroll ethics and practices. Payroll is going to be a subset of accounting and within the accounting field, like any type of profession, accounting being a profession and payroll being a profession in and of itself as a subsection and of its own right. And any profession has to deal with some type of information that's not even between the individuals involved, meaning the person that is processing payroll may have more information than the people, other people involved that are dealing with payroll and therefore the likelihood of some type of fraud or some type of problem uh, happening without it being detected is higher. Therefore, the professions in general, professions usually happen when there's type of this type of information, type of information that's more specialized. And payroll is going to be a, a, a definitely area of specialization where we need some type of regulations within the profession in order to make sure and reduce the types of problems that could result within the payroll processing. The AICPA or American Institute of Certified Public Accountants lists out some responsibilities for accountants in general, some guidelines. One has to do with responsibility. The accountant must maintain the confidentiality of personal records, which of course applies uh, highly to payroll, payroll being an area that's going to have more information in terms of a personal nature, personal records, information like social security numbers that uh, we need to keep uh, in, in confidentiality. Then we've got the public interest. The accountant must always perform his or her duties in the best interest of the public and the company stockholders uh, and the company stockholders. Now that's going to have to do with, of course, we, if we have an our objective not being a personal objective, but being as acting as agents for uh, the, the company in order to make sure the company represents and shows the financial data well, not just for the company, but for the users of the financial data. And that's going to be typically the shareholders and that to the public as well. So we want to make sure that uh, our goals and our objectives when we think of the profession is in, in, in alignment with that for the external users. And if we're acting as that being our end case, then we're acting in a way that's typically good for the profession in general. We have uh, integrity, which has to do with the accountant's behavior must be honest and beyond reproach at all times. So integrity is going to have to do with certain types of things to make sure that one, we look uh, independent both in appearance and in in practice as much as possible. And therefore we, we can say that, you know, there's reliance on the numbers. The more integrity there is in the profession, there's more reliability in the end product, that being the financial statements. And all of this with payroll and the financials, of course, has to do with, with trust. And you, you need to have that uh, factor when uh, dealing with the financial statements and dealing with accountants uh, because it adds value both to the individuals, to the profession, and to the end product being the financial statements and the uh, payroll. Then we have objectivity and independence. The accountants must be able to perform his or her duties without pressure from supervisors. Now, of course, we're going to be working within an, an accounting field and uh, we're, we're going to have, of course, supervisors and whatnot. But we need to maintain some level of independence. We want to make sure that uh, people that are, are critical to the decision making process uh, don't feel pressured to, to do things that they believe are not you know, ethical or not of the ethical responsibility of the end product that we're trying to make the financial statements or uh, would be in such a way that would um, be pressured to do something that they think would not be um, in alignment with some of our other responsibilities, uh, principles including responsibility and uh, public interest and integrity. So we want to make sure that uh, they have that certain level of objectivity because that objectivity leads to the trust, leads to integrity, leads to, to the public interest, leads to responsibility. And then we're going to have uh, the due care. We want to make sure that the accountant must uh, remain current with regards to professional development and uh, evolving legislations. So and part of that, of course, is is within the profession, where, whether we're in a payroll profession or a certified public accountant, a certified public accountant is going to need that continuing education. And when we think about these skills uh, involved here and that specialized knowledge, uh, there, we need to both have integrity and we need to have that responsibility and that objectivity. Uh, but all of that doesn't do 
uh, any good we don't still we can't still have the trust unless we know what we're doing unless we have the knowledge in the first place so most of the professions in and of themselves whether we think of a medical profession the accounting profession a payroll profession a legal profession there's really at least you can break it down to two things that you want from these type of professionals if you go into a doctor a lawyer accountant payroll you want to one know that they know what they're doing and that has to do with due care you want someone and that has to do with any profession typically having a minimum standard typically having some type of test that needs to be uh, gotten to and typically needing to renew that information given the fact that things change in these professions laws change medicine changes the uh, accounting profession dealing with laws change in particular payroll law so we need to make sure that we have the, the current information that's what we want when we go to professional, no matter who the professional is. And two, we want to be able to rely on them. Notice the rest of these basically has to do with uh, reliability. This one has to do with, do we, do they have the skills needed? Do they know what to do? do I, am I talking to someone who's going to be able to cure me or someone that can help me better myself if I'm talking to a, a medical doctor? If I'm talking to someone that's going to be able to help me legally, do they have the skills to do that? And then we want to make sure that their perspective is the same. Are they acting responsibly? Are they in the public's interest? Are they acting basically as my agent rather than in their own personal interest, which may be counter to my interest? Do they have the integrity? Do they have that objective, objectivity and independence in order to act freely and give me advice that uh, they think is best rather than feeling pressure from on some outside source to give advice that uh, isn't as good. When discussing the practical components of payroll, how are we going to implement payroll and some of the things that we need to keep on on top of in terms of our payroll processing and being able to, to know the current topics within payroll have to do with things with like direct deposits and electronic payments and keeping up with new laws. Things like um, timekeeping. How are we going to keep up with the timekeeping? How are we going to record the timekeeping? What type of database system is going to be put in place? What kind of separation of duties are we going to have uh, between uh, the workers in order to implement that time information? We also have different locations. As the world is becoming um, more connected, we're going to have employees that are going to be in different states, different countries, and that's going to uh, add to a level of complexity in terms of how are we going to connect all this stuff together and how are we going to deal with the different laws and regulations. We also note that payroll, as the laws change and grow, are going to be, uh, it's more of a component that's not really in and of itself. Although it's becoming more of a profession, it also um, reaches out into other types of areas uh, within the business, including, of course, like uh, human resources and in terms of managerial planning. So we need to make sure that uh, we have that specialization in order to know what's specifically needed in terms of the payroll practice and we also need to know how the payroll practice is being integrated and used and is part of different areas within the business and be able to work with those different areas the human resources with the planning uh, uh portion for management good job